Hello friends, I am Dr. Parak Shankar of Dekate. I am Clinical Director and Head of Pediatric Intensive Care and Emergency at Kim's Cuddles Kundapur. Today we are going to discuss about uh, work of breathing in the kids basically. We are talking about a very sick kids coming into the emergency with work of breathing. Today I am going to take you through this topic, how to assess them, how to intervene and how exactly we uh, go ahead when we see this kind of a kids. You remember the respiratory illness is the most common thing you see in the emergency. It could be start from just viral infection, cough, cold, little bit of wheezing and breathing difficulty to that extent that you can have pneumonias with the massive work of breathing or you have a bronchitis with very severe work of breathing or there are certain kids who require intubation, non-invasive support or heated high flow support. So remember when we are talking about any condition in the emergency, we have to follow a basic algorithmic approach. So what is? Whenever a child comes into the emergency, we have to think about evaluate the child, identify what exactly we are talking about and intervene. So what do you mean by evaluation? So if you remember, the basic evaluation means primary assessment. What is primary assessment? When the child comes to you, you try to assess depending upon airway, breathing, circulation and disability. So we call it an ABCD approach. So how is an airway? How is the breathing? How is the circulation? Either the child maintaining blood pressures or not? and then we have a disability. So we try to actually kind of uh, categorize them depending upon the ABCD. Then once we follow this ABCD algorithmic approach, then we go to the secondary assessment, which is kind of a detailed examination and evaluation of the each and organ system. Then we kind of uh, run some diagnostic test to identify what we are dealing with. It could be an infection, it could be a viral infection, it could be an asthma, all those things. And once we identify there, we kind of uh, go through the next thing, intervene. We can actually start some kind of a treatment. So as it is evaluation, then we have identification which could be what kind of a system we are taking care of, respiratory, circulatory, or it can be related to the abdomen. And then we start our intervention depending upon the cause. So in the sense like a child coming into the emergency with let it be a work of breathing, he's breathing faster. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to do all those things to start the treatment. So what we're going to do, let it be a child comes to the emergency with work of breathing and I could see the child is breathing faster. So I'm not going to go through the whole algorithmic approach of ABCD. I know that this child is having work of breathing. So I will ask sister or I would, what I would do is I put a face mask oxygen, I might give nebulization, I might put an IV line to make the child comfortable. So basically whenever you identify there is a really a sickness, you intervene there itself. You don't go through the complete algorithmic approach. You intervene there and then once the child stabilizes, you go to the next step. So this is the basic algorithm for any of the disease when we're talking about a pediatric emergency, evaluate, identify and intervene. And as we discussed, the approach remains A, B, C, D, E, airway, breathing, circulation, disability and any external things when we see. And once you identify, you intervene there and kind of uh, stabilize them and go to the next step. So there are few things when we talk about the respiratory system, identify an airway. That means airway is maintainable or not maintainable. What do you mean by maintainable and not maintainable means they are breathing faster. But whether they are able to have, the, they are having any suprasternal retractions or they are breathing faster, they are having a supraclavicular retraction, sternal retraction or intercostal retraction. So you are trying to identify whether they are having a strider, they are breathing faster or you could see the suprasternal kind of it's going inside which suggests there is an upper airway obstruction. And then you try to classify what is kind of a work of breathing you are seeing. It could be mild, moderate, severe. We're going to talk about it, what is mild, moderate and severe. And depending upon that, whether you need a simple in kind of an intervention, let it be a child coming to with work of breathing and you see there is a nose block. So you just put a catheter, do uh, some suctioning and child is fine. So it could be a simple intervention or it could be that you might have to start bag and mass ventilation or you might have to put them on ventilator. So you identify that and try to act accordingly depending upon the severity of the disease. Then as we said, we come to the focus history. Like So let it be there is a child who is having work or breathing or breathing issues, you ask them from how many days the child is having this, is the child had any history of foreign body ingestion, fever, cough and cold, anybody in the family is affected, all those kind of a stuff which was revolving around the diagnosis of this child. And then we do a focused assessment. So once we have a primary assessment which is ABCD, we did little bit of intervention and stabilize the child. We go to the identification of the work of breathing. It is mild, moderate or severe. 
we do some small intervention and then we take care of a secondary history as we discussed that we go in a depth of each and every symptoms try to identify what kind of illness we are dealing with and is it infectious or non-infectious and once we identify and come to some kind of a conclusion oh it looks like a bronchiolitis or pneumonia we try to justify them with the, some laboratory investigation it could be x-ray it could be a blood investigation it will help us to strengthen our diagnosis and then comes the etiological evaluation so what is etiological evaluation means when we talk about etiological evaluation we're talking about is it a viral illness is it a bacterial illness so sometimes we send nasopharyngeal swab sometimes we send a blood culture sometimes we said aspirates all those things to identify which organism i'm dealing with and then we start the definitive treatment remember the initial stabilization treatment is already given and when we think about any kind of a bacterial infection or viral infection depending upon what cause we are thinking about we kind of a give a definitive treatment so when we talk as i discussed in the before there is a respiratory distress and failure so there are a lot of other definition used in the literature impending respiratory failure the child is going into the respiratory failure friends let me tell you, there are only two things. Either it is a respiratory distress or respiratory failure. There is no other definition of impending respiratory failure. So what is respiratory distress when we talk about clinically? So in respiratory distress, you have a tachypnea, you have a retraction, mild to moderate chest retractions. When we are talking about retractions, are we talking about subcostal retractions and intercostal retractions? The child will be irritable, anxious and saturations they will not able to maintain the saturation so normal saturation in the body is more than 92 in a room air so that is normal and these are the kids we are not able to maintain the saturation more than 92 in a room air and they might sometimes not able to maintain the airway by themselves so example is a crew where there is a swelling of the upper airway they are not able to maintain the airway so these are all make sure that they are having a respiratory distress so these are all categorization of the respiratory distress when we talk about respiratory failure, most of them clinically have severe tachypnea. They are not like mild to moderate, severe tachypnea. They are breathing very faster. They are exhausted, bradypneic. Sometimes they are breathing very shallow that they are actually kind of a really tired out. They cannot breathe more than that. They are irritable, drowsy, less erosible. And they have a less saturation in spite of giving oxygen. And these are the patient which needs a immediate intervention in the form of bag and mask or in the form of intubation so categorically any child coming into emergency as a breathing issue you can differentiate between the them it is a respiratory distress or it is a respiratory failure respiratory distress as i told mild to moderate work of breathing they will be able to maintain the saturations they will be a little bit drowsy and irritable and they don't require intubations and bag and mask but other kids who are coming in a respiratory failure they are actually going to die unless and otherwise you intervene there and they are really hypoxic. So as per the PALS, which most of our, we use those recommendation, pediatric advanced life support guidelines, the respiratory, what is respiratory failure? Respiratory failure is the child is not able to maintain the saturation more than 92 and requiring more than 50% of the FI2. That means if any child whose saturation is less than 90 and you start oxygen and they are able to maintain the saturation more than 92 and 40% FI2, it's not a respiratory failure. But the same child requiring 60-70% of FiO2, that means the child is having respiratory failure. PF ratio, we call it as a PO2 and FiO2 ratio. Okay, If it is it's less than 200, then it suggests there is a respiratory failure. PaCO2, partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood is more than 65 or more than 20 from the baseline. It suggests there is a respiratory failure. It is a hypercapnic respiratory failure. And any child coming into the emergency as respiratory failure in the sense most of this patient requiring intubation or bag and mask they are actually termed as a respiratory failure so what is respiratory failure requiring more than 50 percent of the fio2 to keep the saturation more than 92 then their pacu2 is more than 65 or more than 20 from the baseline those who are pf ratio is less than 200 that means they are hypoxic or anybody who is requiring non-elective mechanical ventilation remember this is a epidemiological definition of PALS or respiratory failure given by the PALS. But there are different physiological type of respiratory failure. Hypoxic, that means your oxygen saturation is down, the lung is not oxygenating. Then you have a hypercarbic, that means the carbon dioxide is going up and that is the reason of respiratory failure. There is an another one called as a neurogenic respiratory failure. What is neurogenic respiratory failure? There are brain centers which control the respiration. They are not being effective, they are not acting. So they have a bradypnea or tachypnea or different kinds of a breathing. And 
there is no terminology kind of an impending respiratory failure impending respiratory failure we use when the kids are really really sick and they are having a really really increased work of breathing and we are not sure whether they are qualifying for respiratory failure or not depending upon that there are different patterns of breathing we see so if you see in the first pattern that is called a u apnea that means normal normal breathing so that is you have inspiration then you have expiration remember the expiration is little bit longer than the inspiration so inspiration expiration then inspiration expiration a very synchronized way of breathing then you have the other one which is called as a tachypnea what is tachypnea so your excursion are same but you are actually breathing faster so you can see it here you are breathing faster and your increase rate of respiratory rate remember everything in the lungs is equal to the minute ventilation so what is minute ventilation the tidal volume the number of the volume of air coming in and out during one respiratory cycle is tidal volume into respiratory rate which will decide about the minute ventilation of this breathing so what happens if you are breathing fine you are fine but what happens when you have pneumonia or any infection you need more oxygenation in the body so in during that time what happens the lung try to achieve more minute ventilation so lungs can achieve more minute ventilation by increasing the depth so like i'm breathing more but it is unlikely possible so what we do we try to breathe faster to increase the minute ventilation so example i have a tidal volume of 60 and now i need little bit of a more minute ventilation so what i'll do i will keep the same tidal volume but i'll try to breathe faster so initially if i'm breathing at 20 probably i'll breathe at 30 40 50 and all this physiology remains same for the all age group including kids as well as adults then we have a third pattern bradypnea so what is bradypnea the depth and the tidal volume remains the same but you are breathing slower so usually bradypnea happens in some cns issues you have hypoventilation syndromes you have some brain tumors where there be a bradypnea then apnea apnea means complete cessation of the breathing you are not breathing at all and most of the time it happens when the child is probably not alive then you have a hyperapnea so there is a difference between tachypnea and hyperapnea what happens in hyperapnea in tachypnea there is no increased depth of breathing but in hyperapnea there is an increased depth and the rate of breathing so you are breathing more as well as increased rate so tachypnea and hyperapnea is not same so tachypnea there is no increased depth of breathing but you are breathing faster but hyperapnea both depth of breathing and rate is increased then you have a child stroke breathing what is child stroke breathing there is a gradual increase and decrease in the respiration with periods of apnea that means you will start breathing like this so you are breathing little bit less then slowly more 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 and after some time there will be no breathing then again you will start breathing irregularly but increased or decreased depth and then again you stop breathing child stroke breathing usually seen in the cns issues when there is a raise icp or intracranial space occupying lesion then you have bitots breathing what is this there is an abnormal breathing pattern with groups of clusters of rapid respiration equal depth and regular apnea period so what happens is you are having a regular increased depth of respiration so let it be 3 to 4 times so you are breathing faster and deeper for 3 times and then there is a cessation of breathing then again you have a breathing faster and deeper and then again cessation of breathing so what is the difference between child stroke and bitots child stroke you don't have the equal length of the breathing or equal volume of the breathing sometimes you are breathing less sometime breathing more and then after that apnea but in a bitots breathing usually you have the good amount of equal breathing pattern and then there is a cessation of breathing kusumal's breathing this is basically tachypnea and hyperapnea together so you you have seen what is tachypnea is there is a increased rate the depth remains the same hyperapnea is that means there is a increased rate and depth and kusumal's is both tachypnea and hyperapnea so kusumal's breathing what we see so we are breathing deeper and faster deeper and faster deeper and faster so this is kind of a breathing you see in kusumal's breathing probably some kind of an acidotic breathing we see that apneostic breathing is this is absolutely a uncomfortable breathing usually we see this in hypoventilation syndrome so there is a prolonged inspiratory phase with a prolonged expiratory phase that means and i'll keep the inspiration for pretty long time and then expire so there is no usual pattern so these are the different breathing pattern you see most of the pattern which you see in i would say day to day life in the work of breathing is basically tachypnea and sometimes in i would say diabetic ketoacidosis you see kusumal's breathing or acidotic breathing so there are different when we talk about work of breathing what happens is we actually do auscultation also we see or hear a different sounds 
and every sound probably tells you about something related to different different uh, kind of a things involved or different different phases of the lung involved or parts of the lung involved.